Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to episode 22 of the Michael Pena Senior Show. It's March 28th, 2018. Listen, Mark Twain said, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. And I hope you've been getting started on a lot of things because we're going to get into baby step five today. But before we do that, I just want to go over yesterday and make sure that you are getting educated in everything that you are doing. And one of the big ways that you can get educated is going to michaelpinasenior.com. Check that out and read my blogs. I mean, my blogs are a, a very simple way for you to kind of educate yourself on different areas that we've talked about, okay? And one of the things I'm always talking about is the food budget. And I neglected to remind you that Meg's latest recipe is on there, and that's for chicken stuffed peppers. They are absolutely delicious. So get on there on michaelpinasenior.com. Read about Meg's chicken stuffed peppers. Okay. And also on there, uh, I just basically transcribed a uh, message that Chris sent to me. And he basically was describing the richest man in Babylon. And I, I didn't want to change anything, so I just asked for his permission to put that on my blog. So take a look at that, because it's, it's just a fantastic book, The the Richest Man in Babylon. It, it's, you know, I'm a history major, so a book that was written in 1926 about ancient Babylon, about money, I mean, it's all my worlds coming together. It's just fantastic, and the principles are still, you know, that were talked about in 1926, about principles that were taught in ancient Babylon still hold true today. So get on that, take a look at that, and if you get a chance to read a book, that's the one that we recommend this week, okay? So, today we're going to talk about Baby Step 5. And if you're reaching this, this is college, you know, saving for college for your children. And by now, you've paid off all your debt, you're 100% debt free, you have three to six months in an emergency fund, and you, you now got 15% of your household income going towards retirement. So now, if you have children, this is where baby step five is where you're going to start saving for that college education. And, and you don't want to wait. You don't want to hesitate. You know, you don't want college to sneak up on you. You know, and, I, and I'll tell you, we, we, we got baby Shay, she's two weeks old, doing great, healthy as can be, you know, love her to death, and it feels like just yesterday, Shannon, who's 25, was, you know, the, the, that infant that we were holding, and Michael, who's 20 right now, I mean, it just feels like yesterday that we were just getting out, throwing a football together. And here it is now, he's a sophomore in college, and Shannon's 25. Time flies by, so don't let it sneak up on you, and all of a sudden, you're wondering, how am I going to pay for college? So, two fantastic ways to save for college is a 529 college savings plan or a Coverdale education savings account. Now, they both have tax advantages for you to save in, okay? And just as like retirement, we're going to put it into the four types of mutual funds. Growth, growth and in income, aggressive growth, and international, all right? And, you know, the only problem with an ESA is you can put a maximum of $2,000 a year into that. Whereas a 529 plan, you know, there is no limitations on how much you can put into that. They both grow tax-free. You take them out for education only. They have to be used before the child it reaches the age of 30. Now, you will be penalized on that money if you take it out for something other than college education. So, you know, you just let your, your kid know this is your college savings. This is your college savings. You know, you start putting it in their head from the time that they're little. This is your college savings. So, you know, you, you set your child up to, for, to succeed. And depending on 
what you feel that they're doing. I mean, with, with, with Michael, it was pretty simple. He went to, you know, if they go to a private institution like Severian or, or you know, that's where he went, then, then it's drilled into the head they're going to college, they're going to college. And, and that's good and that's bad because I, I don't know how much, you know, I, I'm, I'm believing in the college education right now because the, the, the kids are coming out with so much debt. And you want to avoid that debt. And this is one of the ways to avoid it is to start saving now. But at the same time, you know, they're not getting a utilitarian um, education. Whereas Shannon, you know, going to a technical high school, these kids are going to a technical high school coming out with a utilitarian education. So going to college is now becoming more of an option. So just be careful in what you put your money in, you know, depending on what your philosophy is in college. I still believe I would want my child to go to college. I wanted Shannon to go to college. He went to college. So, you know, you want to have some savings put aside. I mean, putting 2000 into an education savings account is, it, you know, basically you could, you could have about, you know, if you started when they were one years old up until that 18, getting ready for college. That with with growth, you know the mutual funds that uh, averaging twelve percent a year, you could still have about fifty thousand dollars saved up, fifty to seventy thousand dollars depending on the market. So that's a, that's a great start. And you know if you followed some of my other advice, you know starting out in a junior college or a community college, then going on to a four year school. Seventy thousand dollars could be plenty for these ch for the for your child to to get into college, but if you want to feel safe and you open up a five twenty nine plan, then you know you could put ten thousand a year into that and have plenty of money saved up and and the decisions of wherever you want them to go to school could be endless. So it depends on your philosophy. You need help setting that up. Give me a call. And we will get somebody, a professional, that will help you take care of that. Okay? So, again, that's baby step five. And, you know, normally we do baby step four, five, and six together. We'll talk about baby step six next week. And we will get into some more things about who you should be hiring or who you should be um, trusting in order to set these accounts up for you. We'll do that next week. We got some other exciting things to talk about this week. But listen, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And, you know, continue to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. If you've got something that you want to communicate to me, coachp2210 at yahoo.com. Contact me anytime and like my my page on Facebook at Pina Financial Coaching. And listen, we're going to go Facebook Live with my podcast. And in order to watch that, you've got to like my Pina fi Financial Coaching on Facebook. I was going to do it through my personal account, but I want you to go on to Pina Financial Coaching. I want you to like that page. So do that, and you can watch our podcast live. We will be videotaping those, so I will be putting them on YouTube later. But I want you to go on Facebook Live so questions can be asked during the interviews. So make sure you get on to all my, my different uh, media outlets. And, you know, let's build that community together. Continue to co comment on things. Continue to get in touch with me. And, you know, we're bringing this and we're bringing that community together. So let's do this together. Listen, I'm living my passion one day at a time. I want to win. I want to help you win. I want us to win together.